Our first guest has been named one of CMT's 2021 Next Women of Country. Previous artists have been Casey Musgraves, Mickey Guyton, and Mary Morris. She's been praised by Rolling Stone, Billboard, and the New York Times, and could very well be this year's breakout superstar. All right, her stomping ground this morning, Raina Roberts, is Great Day Houston. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I am good. All right, like a good gumbo musically, you had a mix of everything growing up. Absolutely. I've listened to, my parents played everything classical, gospel, R&B, rock, country, all of it. Yeah, and you are a mix of all of it. Uh, you know, you're non-conventional in the country world, as we all know, but life was non-conventional for you from the get-go. Born in Fairbanks, Alaska, you came into the world fighting, and your premature fighting weight was two pounds. Yes, yes it was. I was just a little tiny thing. Um, because I was in, um, because I was born to two pounds, I actually had to stay in the hospital for two months, um, for additional two months so I could recover. Yeah, yeah, you had underdeveloped lungs, but in a sense, your curse became your blessing because your mom used music to help you develop those lungs. She did, she did. Um, I could actually sing and I could hum before I even started talking. So I, I, I call it a miracle yeah. because of her of the work that she ended up with. okay now we're looking at some video right here so for most of us we're in a bar at supposed to be like a 21 plus you, you you were there at a very early age in fact probably had to take a break for diaper changes <laughs> it's funny i actually still remember that day i remember my mom she took she took us to a karaoke bar in Alaska. I was three. She put me on the stool, brought the mic over, and we sang Lady Marmalade. <laughs> and I can still rem I still have that memory today. Oh today. You're not only a vocalist, but you're also a musician. And so you started playing the piano at the age of eight. Uh, when you mm -hmm. win your like Grammy, CMTs, ACMs, all that type of stuff, there's one person besides your parents that you'd love to thank, and one of those people would be your piano teacher. Joseph Ataya, absolutely. Um, there was a time in our lives where we couldn't afford um, his rate. We couldn't afford any lessons at all, honestly. And for a whole year, he just gave me free lessons. Um, and I, I will forever be so thankful, so grateful for Joseph. Um, he uh. taught me. All, all of my classical training. Yeah, yeah, you're a military brat. I'm a military brat as well. And when you are that, oftentimes you move a lot. Mm -hmm. I went to five different uh, elementary schools. But you know, country music features, I think, uh, some extra grit. And a lot of that grit can come from being a military brat. But there's some other things that you uh, experienced as well. PTSD, homelessness, instability. Yep. Yeah. Um, my parents, my mom and my, my dad were in the army for 10 years. Um, my bonus dad, Cartier, <laughs> he was in the Marine Corps for, for 20 years. And because of their experiences in the military, they, they still deal with PTSD. Um, mm -hmm. But because of some of those factors, we were homeless for, um, for about a year or so when I was in middle school. So I want to say about 10 years old. Yeah. Um, at one, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no absolutely. No, 10 years old at such a, a young age, but you know, I always say your toughest times teach you your greatest les lessons. And when you're an artist, it all unfolds in what you do. You know, for some kids, it's that blanket or that favorite toy. I know I had this favorite toy that would go with me everywhere. So that was my familiarity uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Your parents managed to keep that piano for you. They did it. And it's, when I think about it now at this age, like the sacrifices they had to make in order to do that, because we didn't have a home and they took my piano and they put it in a storage unit so I could keep playing. And so they would take me to the storage unit maybe three times out of the week, let me play and sing in the storage unit for about three hours. And I remember um, as I would play and sing, because I like to belt, so I'd be belting <laughs> and playing <laughs> piano. And and children and their parents would come and they would see me playing and singing or they'd hear me and they'd walk to our unit and they'd sit down or they'd stand up and they'd watch me for like 30 minutes or an hour. Uh -huh. um, 
just to hear whatever I was singing and playing that day. Yeah, in that way, music was therapy, not only for you, but for other people around you as well. And you know, if they'll go to the storage unit and sit there for an hour to hear you, it's like, hmm, this may be, uh, this may be a living one day. But before you got to that, you're unconventional again. You were not an athlete, mm -hmm. but you joined the high school wrestling team. And what I love about you is that, you know, so many times people want the reward, but not the challenge. You wanted the challenge. Right. You did that first. The reward came later because eventually you beat the boys and the girls and uh, part of that wrestling team being on the wrestling team is how you came up with your trademark red hair yes it's funny I've always been clumsy and awkward and shy um, but I always watched WWE growing up with my dad <laughs> and <laughs> and I, I knew when I got to high school that it wasn't the same kind of wrestling but um, I had friends that had wrestled that were a year older and I was like that I want to try it looks like a challenge and it was a challenge. I lost every match my first year, my freshman year. I didn't win any, I lost like 23. Um, but I also, I like the challenge. I was like, I'm not about to sit here and keep losing. I need to learn how to just get better. So Yeah, and you got better beating the that. boys and the girls. All right, when it comes to the music yes. industry, you also kept trudging along there, doing everything right. You did the right moves. You went to the, the Nashville songwriting camp, all that type of stuff. But it's got to feel good to get recognition for those who are the trailblazers before you, Mickey Guyton and Carrie Underwood. We want to take a, a listen right now because we know that they started posting you on social media. Listen. Mm -hmm. So Mickey said, country also looks like this. And Carrie Underwood said, looks and sounds great. Uh, we just heard uh, an interview with Mickey Guyton on CBS this morning. And uh, they were talking about just how long it's taken for African-Americans to make it in the country world. We certainly know that uh, we've seen other races in, in gospel, in, in soul music. Why do you think it's taken so long for us to transition into the country world? Because the talent's certainly there. I... Let me think about what I'm going to say, because I want to be clear. Yeah. Um, it, the, I first want to say it's so hard because my my experience has been so different. Um, I started pursuing country music two years ago. And like when I've talked to Mickey, seeing how long, 10 years that she's had a, a deal and now she is being recognized for her talent now is, but because of her, like I didn't have it didn't take me 10 years. It's yeah. taken me two years. Um, and so my journey has just been so different. I was able to find my team a lot faster when I got to Nashville and which already escalated me to be in the right rooms with the right people. So it hasn't taken me as long as a lot of the other um, yeah, as, and we're starting to realize um, that, you know, great music is just great music, no matter who is singing me. it. All right, you're featured on ESPN, Monday Night Football with Stomping Ground. You wrote that about your parents having to move all the time, speaking of, you know, mm -hmm. sharing your experiences. Uh, but just want to say congratulations to you. And you are going to be the next, um, what I call Dorothy Farrah Rachel. You're too young to know what that is, but everyone wanted Dorothy Hamill's haircut back in the 70s, Farrah Fawcett's haircut, and Rachel, of course, Jennifer Aniston on Friends. Mm -hmm. So now, everyone's gonna be wanting the red hair I gave it a try yesterday so I I, I thought maybe I will Ooh, do the you look I, good. I can do you the ruby amazing. red hair too you're gonna be responsible for all the ruby red hair explosion but Raina thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to charting your success thank you so much I hope you have a blessed day yeah and you, you don't forget us when you come through town and we want you on the show again okay never I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up first all right thank you very much Raina